Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the Kremlin to recapture Kursk by October the 1st, and Russian troops dutifully launched a counter-attack along the western edge of the Ukrainian salient. Ukrainians in Kursk are under attack at the farthest reach of their supply lines, threading into the oblast from the Ukrainian city of Sumy. But German Merker tabloid says that Kiev's troops are delivering effective pinpricks and are even able to advance into other Russian regions. It is noted that while a HIMARS attack by Ukraine destroyed an important pontoon bridge in the region, Putin's troops apparently suffered another heavy blow in Kursk, which resulted in bitter losses for Russia. According to the Ukrainian Air Force, Putin's troops were repelled in a battle lasting several hours during an assault attack. According to the Ukrainian Air Force, the Russian unit's attack took place on September the 13th and 14th. On September the 13th, and 14 military vehicles attacked the positions of the Ukrainian airborne troops. According to the report, two tanks, 11 infantry fighting vehicles, and an armored personnel carrier were used. The attempt to break through the defensive positions of the Ukrainian armed forces failed. In a heavy battle, lasting several hours, the Ukrainian paratroopers proved that they are better in military matters and have mastered the science of winning with flying colors, said the Ukrainian Air Force about the battle in Kursk. Putin's troops are said to have suffered heavy losses, including five airborne infantry fighting vehicles, one enemy tank, and one armored personnel carrier. Russia is also said to have lost several dozen soldiers in the attack. The rest of the survivors are said to have fled. Despite the reported deployment of 35,000 Russian soldiers, the counter-offensive following Ukraine's Kursk advance is at a standstill. Despite the deployment, Putin's troops cannot currently celebrate or report any major successes, even though there have been reports of the recapture of 10 villages in the oblast. Experts from the US think tank Institute for the Study of War take a similar view. According to their analysis, the Russian military will probably have to move additional elements from other parts of the region to Kursk. This is necessary in order to form a group capable of conducting a sustained counter-offensive. The US is forcing Ukraine to resist Russian aggression with its hands tied. This is what The Economist writes. The publication recalls that on September the 13th, there were hopes that Ukraine would finally be allowed to use British and French Storm Shadow Stroke Scalp cruise missiles against targets in Russia. US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer spoke for two hours at the White House and many thought that the American leader would finally give his permission. But after the meeting, the situation remained just as uncertain. The American side only confirmed that the policy of limiting the use of Western long-range systems to targets in Ukraine had not changed. The publication also cites the words of the former commander of American forces in Europe, Ben Hodges, in support of Kyiv in this endeavor. There is no moral or legal reason not to achieve these goals, the military man says. In turn, former U.S. Special Representative for Ukraine, Kurt Volker, claims that the U.S. is exaggerating Putin's threats. They're designed to keep us from doing something, not to make it relevant to what he's actually going to do, Volker said. The authors predict that Putin's use of tactical nuclear weapons can never be completely ruled out. However, if Biden softens his position after the meeting with Zelensky, there is unlikely to be an official announcement of permission for Kyiv to attack targets in Russia. Instead, this decision may be private. Recall as the September the 30th deadline approaches, US President Joe Biden faces a critical decision about $5.4 billion in aid for Ukraine. This sum must either be utilized by the deadline or extended through congressional approval. The White House has the capacity to allocate an additional $10.7 billion, comprising $5.3 billion from reassessments of previous years and $4.1 billion for USAI, the $5.4 billion allocated under the Presidential Drawdown Authority presents a unique challenge. Experts point out that unlike USAI or FMF funds, Presidential Drawdown Authority does not involve actual money, but is merely an authorization, not a direct source of funding. If Congress extends the $5.4 billion, Biden would still struggle to fully use these funds due to the specifics of the PDA and the resulting financial gaps. 
Some of these funds might remain unspent and be carried over as available presidential authority into 2024, but without real money to back them up. This would put Biden in a position where he'd need to take political responsibility for providing weapons that won't be replaced with new ones.